doing, baby? What you doing? I am home for a week and I have a big order. This is my dummy. I'm draping the garment on it. It's going to look so pretty. This one is a sequin vest with a collar. Um, it's for a dog named Lizzie. Um, I used to do this on 7th Avenue for humans, but I hated it. So I quit because I was really young at the time. And then after I adopted my dogs and I saw all these dogs getting put to sleep, like really beautiful dogs being put to sleep um, just because no people didn't know they existed. Oh, wind. <laughs> So I got, I designed a cute little line of t-shirts and hoodies and I got a couple of pro photographers and we went into the shelters and we took doggy headshots. And the first time we adopted 86 dogs and the second time we adopted 99 dogs. So I basically made it a business where I dressed dogs and made like people matching pet uh, fashions and we, uh, and did fashion shows to raise money for, um, uh, for, uh, sorry, my sister's calling right now, but I can't answer it. <laughs> she wants to talk to my mom, but I'm outside and my mom's inside. She's doing pretty good. Um, it's terrible to see somebody that has lost their ability to walk on their own, to take care of themselves on their own. I mean, we take care of her and we just love her dearly, but I would imagine she would rather move on to whatever's next unless she has no idea what's next and she's scared. I tried to talk to her, but she just goes and closes her eyes. I think that's pretty much a sign of not wanting to confront. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just a day by day thing. I have incredible anxiety around it all because, um, because I just have no idea. It's like, it's like she's in a kind of limbo and we're all in a kind of limbo. And you know, you just make the best of it. I'm thankful I get to take trips to beautiful places every now and again. My sister is her official caregiver, so that's why I can do it. Um, I'm just secondary help. Um, so I cut all the, I basically draped this for a slightly larger dog. Um, and then, um, then I, I cut it in muslin and um, fit it on the smaller dummy. It's better than starting from scratch on the draping because it just, it just takes less time. So, um, I have an observation that I have to share and it extends beyond YouTube into just general news. Um, all of these YouTube channels that have like a zillion followers that are the, the cool kids of, of van life, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. They're all posting their own video of van life is dying. It's not dying. They're leaving. So they might as well have just said, I'm leaving van life to build vans for all you people that want to be in van life. Um, but instead they're posting all these things. Like one said she was bored. And you know what? That is actually very logical. Who wouldn't get bored doing this for living in a van with, uh, these are often couples, living in a van, not having any more space than that, not knowing where you're gonna sleep at night. I mean, it's fun for a while and it's exciting. Um, but there comes a point in time where, especially if you're in your 20s, where it's like, what do I want for the rest of my life? Um, I made so many changes in my life of different things I did. I worked as a designer, then quit at like, what, 25, uh, became an actress, then quit at, I don't know what age, to be a writer. And I'm still a writer. But uh, when I wrote, I worked in bars. Um, and that was great because you could work in the bar during the day and then if your mind was totally free on your days off and you'd have several in a row and you could just write all day and it was like nothing else existed. But then, um, I, uh, I started my own business cause I didn't want to work in bars anymore. And that's two creative things. Um, so my brain just couldn't write, but now I'm starting up again. Uh, 
COVID, uh, COVID was when I built this and COVID was also a time when I became very pissed off, uh, politically speaking, COVID and before because of the whole Trump lies, hypocrisy, this whole crap about uh, vaccines killing people when a million Americans died because there wasn't a vaccine or they didn't have it, they didn't get it. I mean, it's like crazy shit. Anyway, back to this whole thing of, uh, of van life is dying. So because all of these people with a zillion followers post it and because YouTube then posts those with lots of followers more often, puts them in the side column, shares them instead of new people, then their truth becomes what people see as truth. And it's like news doesn't always tell the truth. Enough of that stuff. I have now, I'm gonna show you what I've done. It's really ugly at this point because it's just about fit. Um, it has a plain front and then it'll have little armholes. It zips up the back and it has a very nice collar and a very nice peplum. Um, so I'm going to finish after you drape the muslin, then uh, you draw lines on it, um, like where all the seams are and stuff. And then you have this cloth pattern and then I put it in paper. Now this client orders a lot of stuff. So all her patterns have her own name on it because she'll order something again. So this goes until <laughs> August. August is when I um, officially retire. Uh, and then I don't have a big, um, I don't have a big amount of money I get from social security because as you can gather from my description of my life, I did enjoyed, got bored, quit, did enjoyed, got bored, quit, did enjoy, got bored, quit. So I'm not rich. I don't have a big social security, but I can keep working at this, um, and I can never do van life full time. Um, it's, it's really fun to like travel and see new things, but it's, I, I have my business. I have to be home where I have space. I have my family. Um, I, I don't have my friends because I left California, so I don't have friends, but that sucks. Oh, well, you can be my friends. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn this off and really focus on my work. <laughs> <laughs>